types of analyses and visualizations. So in this set of videos, we're going to be covering some of the major types of descriptive analyses and their corresponding visualizations. Uh, so these are nominal comparisons, time series, ranking, part to whole, deviation, frequency distribution, and correlation. We have seen some of these and we have worked with them, um, namely name nominal or categorical comparison and also frequency distribution with the histograms. And but we'll summarize all of these uh, here in this video. So nominal comparison also another word for this is uh, categorical. So simple comparison of categorical subdivisions of one or more measures in no particular order. I'm not really sure if this, this word subdivision maybe kind of get um, uh, make things more complicated, but it is about a category and is about a measure. So usually we're going to have at least one measure or one variable, as we see in the example here, and we have another variable of category. So this, this is a categorical variable. It's always good. I always like to make sure I understand how many variables, how many dimensions are being considered. <clears throat> so we don't confuse like values with dimensions or one particular instance with a category and so on. So each of these is an instance. Now it could be a group or this may be the unit of analysis or it could be aggregated from the data. It depends what kind of uh, the data you had. If you had like all the individual cities uh, and then you had to actually sum them all up into a north category, this may be the case because the data was not just north. The data was more, more granular than this, which is usually good. So you actually, before, before you actually create this graph of north, east, south, and west uh, calls, how many calls each area did, you had the data of like, um, you know, the south, North Dakota and Michigan, all the northern states, and what you had to do is actually just sum them all up into a north category. Either way, this is a categorical variable um, because it's not numeric, it's qualitative. But we also have a quantitative variable, which is calls. So calls by region, the region is the category region, and then the calls is here. Um, and then of course, focused on Q1, 2003. So maybe you had data for Q1, Q2, quarter one, first quarter, second quarter, but you wanted to visualize just the first quarter. So you did so here. Of course, you could visualize if you had the data, maybe two quarters together and so on. Uh, this is a two-dimensional bar graph. We just call this bars only or bar graph. And they usually can be uh, <clears throat> horizontal or vertical. It doesn't make much of a difference, although we'll talk a little bit about the horizontal. Um, and also sometimes we want to think about the uh, ordering here. Why does why do we say north first? Why did, does it make a difference if we put is this alphabetical word or how should we order them? An example is the bubble chart. So there's another kind of uh, nominal comparison or categorical comparison. So there are well as far as I can tell. So there's two variables. One variable is the job title. Job title and each job title has a different color. But it's just this one variable because, I mean, yeah, just one variable, job title. And then there's another variable, one. And then there's the other variable is count, uh, count of job positions in city of Chicago government. So uh, there are uh, 10,000 police officers. And then we can visualize that. So before, notice we visualize that by having a bar that is bigger or smaller. So I know I can automatically say East is much higher than South and maybe almost twice as much because no, I don't even need to look at the numbers. I can just see it. So this is the bar, the higher the bar, the higher the, the calls, the higher the level. Here is the same idea, but the circle. So the bigger the circle, the higher the number. And we would assume this is all proportional. So if this, let's say uh, this circle here, looks you know three times bigger than the sucker we would assume and usually we want to implement that and say that oh this is three times more than this one so you can even tell because this one doesn't have information but um you can see this size here is very similar 
to this size here because the numbers are very similar. So the different size of the bubble is the different value of the count of jobs. And each bubble is a value of the job title category, right? The bubbles themselves all referring to job titles. Here's one of the other graphs presented in one of the previous lectures. So this is the products and their prices, products that a uh, uh, farmer has. So they have black beans, mixed beans, oats, pinto, and then each category is a categorical variable, each um, one value of the whole cate uh, category of products has their own price. And you can kind of see, oh, this can clearly see, oh, this is the lowest one here. Price at about 250, and then this is the highest one here, price at five, and so on. Um, are these bars organized? No, they're not organized. And I actually point for you to consider sorting to facilitate comparison of products from the graph. It's kind of like a missed opportunity. If we sorted, we could clearly see which one is the lowest and which one is the highest. By not sorting, then you kind of have to like move around. Okay, I can see this is the lowest, but then which one goes, and then maybe this, and then this, and then this, and then this. But it kind of takes more work. If we just had uh, sorted, we would automatically see which one is the lowest and which one is the highest. So that's considered for, um, that's useful considering. Trends over time. So another very common kind of graph is the time series graph, which uh, identifies or graph uh, visualizes trends over time, how a variable changes over time. So generally, what we, um, this is multiple instances of one or more measures taken at equidistance points in time. Um, usually you wanna have equidistance, you don't really need to, but it would make your graph a little bit more uh, sort of informative because if you don't have it, for example, if you have January data, but no February data and then March data, you have a break in the data and that is not good. Let's say you have January, not February, and then March, then April. It kind of makes it difficult to visualize because you don't know what happened then. You can't just make it up. You could just remove it, but um, it's not going to be a nice graph. Um, multiple instances, I, really, I don't know this is a very good way to explain it, but let me explain it the way I, I can tell. So uh, you're going to have this time series graph when you have a uh, date, date or time variable. And usually it's going to be on the X axis. And then we're having any other measure here on the Y axis. So this can be sales, campaign contributions, any kind of number. It's number though that we're talking about. This is quantitative. Now we could have um, qualitative data, but uh, could be a little, oh, and time, but it would not be a time series graph. Time series, at least two quantitative variables, whereas time is one quantitative variable. And then there's another quantitative variable here on the Y axis. Um, and also there can be a third. So this is one variable, one dimension, two, sales another dimension. We also have a third dimension here, which is the category actually right here. And the categories is one is the yellow and one is the gray. So, so maybe it doesn't say here, but this could be north, north cells in the north, and this could be cells in the south. So obviously these are categorical. This is not a number, right? Uh, but the north, north has Sales has sales and has sales over time. And the South also has sales, number of sales and has sales over time. So we can plot them in the same graph and see uh, and compare them, how they change over time. And actually we have three variables here, one of the dates, two of the sales, and then three of uh, the North of the region. Here we have Bitcoin price. This is a also time series trend. Uh, this also ends in 2013, by the way. Uh, so goes up, down, up and on, and up and so on, and down again, and then up and so on. Time series graphs. Uh, here another one. Uh, I think we kind of got the point across, but I just wanted to emphasize that often we'll have. So this was only two dimensions, right? One dimension, 
date and time. And second dimension, cost or price in US dollars. So just two dimensions. Um, and here we have three because we have the date. Notice it's years. It can be years, it can be weeks, it can be even uh, hours or minutes. And then here we have, uh, this is a rising inequality over time me measured by Gini coefficient. So the higher the Gini, the greater the inequality. It's a measure of income inequality. So the higher, the greater unequal the people in the country. And then we also have a third variable, which is the countries themselves. Uh, so you can see here and you can compare them how each uh, country is uh, represented by these two variables here by that relationship between time and inequality. And you can see the US going up and up and up. Um, other, a little bit more steady, uh, some other emerging countries going up to with time. Uh, also time series, time series are everywhere. We kind of saw this before. Uh, this, is, this is interesting because this is not a line graph. This is a bar graph, uh, but so often when we're dealing with time series, we have line graphs, but sometimes it's good to have a bar graph if you wanted to emphasize the, the area underneath to see really uh, the density of, of, the, of the, the content, in this case, the cases of death, death cases in, the, in Michigan state from COVID. So once we have a line, it's kind of like hard to see the whole area in the bottom, but the whole area in the bottom really represents the cumulative, uh, not totally, not directly, but indirectly, the kind of accumulation of all those deaths in this case over time. So sometimes it's beneficial to have a bar graph like this uh, to emphasize the amount of things that are happening every single uh, day or every single week and so on over time. Here we can see with the line and also uh, more transparent bar graphs on the time. So sometimes you also want to uh, um, uh, uh, depict or visualize various pieces of information. So here, for example, there's two kinds of information. There's the confirmed, the non-confirmed, the non-confirmed. Uh, or additional or probable, confirmed versus probable. The lighter red is probable and the dark red is confirmed. So usually uh, there's more probable than confirmed. You have it confirmed, but you also expect there could be a few additional more. The confirmed are pretty are confirmed, so there's no problem there. So the probable is additional deaths that are not confirmed yet. So in this graph, they use the bar for both, but in this year, they use the bar for the confirmed, now focused on cases, confirmed, and then in the bottom, this is more probable. Also, there could be different kinds. For example, this may be an average, a line of the seven-day moving average. So it puts together a number of these bars, averages them out, and then kind of makes a more smoother line than the actual bar graphs. So there's a lot of stuff we can do with uh, these kinds of analyses. Ranking. The ranking is um, this very similar to the nominal comparison. It is a categorical comparison. Let's call it categorical comparison. So this is just like what we talked before, nominal comparison, same thing, categorical comparison, but it's sorted. It's sorted. Uh, so we can use bar graphs for this to highlight high value sort in descending order, some from more to Loss to highlight low value sort in ascending orders. <clears throat> I'm not really sure you actually accomplished this, uh, but that's what they said here. Uh, sometimes you want to highlight the high values you sort in ascending order. Uh, but okay, highlight low value sort in ascending order uh, could be uh, because you know the then the low values would be on on the top. So whatever you see on top is the first. So it could be correct. Uh, here. It's just like before, but this is a sideways, a horizontal, right? This is horizontal uh, graph. Uh, we have categories and they're sorted in descending order from top to down, going descending means going down. 
um, manufacturing is 250 headcount people. So that's people working in manufacturing, people working in sales, people working in engineering, and so on. It seems to me always good to just sort your bar graph anyway, so you get that additional information visualized there pretty straightforward. Uh, and, but there might be reasons not to do so. Maybe you want to um, uh, sort in some other kind of way, like alph alphabetical order or something like that. Proportion. So proportion is another major type of graph. Uh, and these are also called part to whole. So usually uh, is when we see ratios to the whole. So how, we, how uh, pieces fit together within a whole. So let's take a look at some examples to understand that better. Um, now the example here is bar, bar graphs and you can do that. And also this idea of stacked bar graphs, which we actually saw over here. So these are also stacked bar graphs. There's one measure, and then there's another measure right on top of it. There's the confirmed, and then there's a probable continue right on top. These are called stacked bar graphs. Um, uh, I don't think these are actually great to measure proportions in terms of parts to whole, but you can certainly create a nominal comparison just like we did before. Uh, where your, your measure is percentage. So uh, we can translate the numbers of, well, before we had sales or something or calls, and here we have regional total percent of expenses. So the West had 33% of expenses. The East had about 30. So we had 66. This one had about 21 or something. 66 and this one had um, about 16. And then if we sum, this should be 63, 21 plus 16, 37. This equals 100, oh, look at that, perfect. Uh, so you can see, right? The South had the least and then the North a little bit more and then the East and then West. Um, now the thing with proportion in parts of whole, I think the best way to do that is via the pie chart because you create the whole there itself in the visualization with the circle. So here we have cases by race, ethnicity. Uh, this is Oklahoma COVID-19 cases. It doesn't really matter what the issue is. We do have two variables, cases, and percentage of uh, uh, cases is the main measure. And then we have a categorical variable, which is race or ethnicity however people want to think about it. But we are not using, notice we're not using the, val the absolute values themselves, like three whites and five blacks and so on. We are using the percentage. <clears throat> and here we see 69.6% were white only cases and 6.7 American Indian and, and so on. Um, now, you always got to be careful when there's too many categories and you're breaking down into colors so you can kind of match. This one, I think, is pretty straightforward, but sometimes it doesn't. But I want to invite you to think about something that's kind of a little bit odd that is missing here from this graph. Uh, you can, I mean, you can find out multiple ways. So, if you, for example, if you sum, let's say you have 76.7, that's 76.7. This is 10.6, 76.7 plus 10.6. I'm just summing up 70 plus 6.7 plus 5.5, 5.1, that's 10.6. 3.2, that's 5.2. So that's 15.8 uh, plus 76.7. Five, one, uh, one and six, seven, seven and six, seven and six is 13. One, we got 93. We're kind of missing. Kind of, what is the other percentage? Well, they say here 13 did not report race. 13% did not report race. 16.7% did not report ethnicity. Now, so first of all, I thought race and ethnicity was the same thing, it was only one variable. So this is the question, is this two variables or one variable? It's not clear, like, because uh, some of these are usually considered race, like this is considered ethnicity, this is considered race. 
So they just mix them all here, like some of them are race and some of them are ethnicity. This is really weird. The numbers don't match because you, you add up to about 93.5. So you're missing 7%, but then you say, this is not 7%, this is 13% and 17% did not report. So almost like none of this makes sense, except that probably more white people had COVID than other people or percentage of white people and so on. So this is a really kind of bad pie chart. Actually write something here, what is wrong or missing from this graph? And just to say, consider showing percentage of all instead of only those who responded. So I'm still not sure if this is percentage of all hold those who responded or not, because it doesn't match here. It doesn't match when we subtract it. But you want to have an extra category here instead, like, oh, you know, 16% did not respond. So out of all the people that ask, you know, 5% were white, you know, or 5% white had COVID, 10% uh, that had COVID, you know, were black and so on. You want to have did not respond. Also, you want to stick to the one, the one variable, only one quantitative variable at a time. The categorical variable is one, and then the quantitative variable is two, and that's it. Now, the race and ethnicity, I don't know if it is, is a third variable or the same. Really confusing, really confusing. Uh, we're going to stop here, and then we're going to continue later with uh, deviation types of graphs.